You're listening to Halfway There, episode number 146, Misty Phillip and the Counterintuitive Ways of God. Friends, welcome to Halfway There. This is the show where we have honest conversations with ordinary Christians. I'm your host, Eric Nevins. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am super glad that you are here. Um, uh, so excited that you downloaded and that you are uh, listening. This is a really great episode. Our conversation today um, is one that is going to prove yet again that suffering is where God really refines us. So I'll tell you about that in just a little bit. A um, little bit about what's been going on here. You know, it's summertime. We've got uh, people headed all over the place. We're going to be taking a little vacay together, me and the wife. So that'll be fun. The uh, beautiful Mrs. Nevins, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of um, just fun together. I can't remember the last time we had time together, just us. Um, that kind of happens when you have a bunch of kids. Uh, you don't always get a lot of time together alone. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, it's been an interesting, interesting ride here. I, I know I shared on here that, uh, there was a shooting at our kids school and this last week I had this real interesting, um, uh, just process, I guess is the word. Um, with, with that, that I didn't really expect. And so, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about that and then we'll get, get into the interview, but what, here's what happened on Thursday last week, they released the police reports from the incident. And, uh, you know, I think I had been kind of just doing okay with it. You know, there's this sort of interesting way that, uh, an incident like that, um, changes you a little bit, but not, you know, I couldn't tell like it wasn't really a, a big deal. I was trying to just kind of keep going because life goes on. You have to, you have to do that sometimes. And then they released this police report and we got to read, uh, the affidavits and the interviews that they did, the police did with the students who committed this crime. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of ways your emotions can go. In that, and I think you know, if I were you, I would be thinking, wondering where would your emotions go? Where where, where would my emotions go? Uh, and I would probably imagine what that might be like. Um, the the weird thing is, I didn't go to where I normally go. Normally, I would go to anger. Uh, anger would be my kind of thing that uh, it would be the way that any emotion would be expressed. Um. And I couldn't do that. That wasn't what that wasn't my response when I read what these two kids had gone through, uh, particularly that day, but also describing some of the things that had happened before that. I was just kind of grieved. You ever have that moment? You ever have those feelings when you just realize how sad it is? I mean, it's it's sad what happened. It's sad that uh Kendrick died. Uh, if you don't know the story, uh, you can go back and, and find out. But there was a there was a police or there was a school shooting at my kid's school back in May, and uh, one child died. A number of others were hurt, and two kids were taken into custody. So eleven families, you know, lost or well, eleven families had um, serious trauma, and then and three families lost lost their kids including the families of the two shooters. And um, anyway, I just found myself feeling very um, moved and feeling a lot of not just not really empathy, maybe empathy, but compassion and heartbrokenness was the word that I kind of came up with uh, for these students. It's just sad. And so here's, here's why I'm sharing that with you um, because I think sometimes what happens with these kinds of incidents is people people want to go to politics. They want to talk about guns. They want to talk about mental health. Um, they want to talk about you know other things that that they can think to bring up. Um, 
this is a this is a situation. Um, this the um, one of the the younger student. She is a transgender, uh, so she prefers to go by Alex. She's ch- transgender, and so like as an American evangelical, white suburban American evangelical, who could be more my enemy than a uh, transgender school shooter? <laughs> right. Um, but, but Jesus, doesn't everything good start with that? Uh, but Jesus says, love your enemies. And so I found myself as I was reading that, uh, police report, loving, uh, our enemy. Uh, weird Mm -hmm. to me, honestly, it was a, it was a, it felt like a foreign, a foreign, um, I don't know, a foreign feeling. It just didn't feel, it felt strange. I couldn't believe it. Um, and yet that's exactly where I am. And so our hearts are going out to those two students. I would love it. Uh, if you would continue to pray, if you just join us, if you do like if you pray for, for the STEM family, uh, and for, and for our family, would you just let me know that you can go to halfway there podcast.com hit contact, or you can always just, uh, just tweet me or hit me up on Facebook I would love to connect with you in that way as well. And I don't really, you know, it's, I'm not asking because I, I like need some sort of affirmation or anything. I just, sometimes it's good to know. It's good to know that you're out there. And it's good to know that uh, when I share something crazy and deep like that, that uh, it's not too much. Anyway, so that's the kind of stuff I'm wrestling with right now. And I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, and I think because here's the thing. This episode, like I said, is about suffering. It's about the ways that suffering change us, move us, uh, let God in, how God reveals things and uh, teaches us how to love him. Man, all of that is in this episode. Um, I think you're going you're gonna to enjoy it. So if you're going through something this, this week, uh, I just want to encourage you, um, you know, listen to this story. And know that God is there. Feel free to reach out to him. Ask him what's going on. Ask him what he wants to do. Ask him to give you a heart um, that loves. And he'll do it. I know he will. Okay, so today our guest, she is a uh, podcaster. Um, In fact, I was just on her show. Her name is Misty Phillip. She has a show called By His Grace. And I'm going to throw a link to that in the show notes so that you can... Uh, check that out as as well if you want to hear me on her show. and uh, But she's also a speaker and a blogger and an author. And so the story of how she ended up being an author uh, when she was kind of trying to, to run from God and the and the and all the suffering that she goes through to get there um, is really a fascinating story. And I'll tell you what, um, man, if it doesn't prove that God loves you, nothing will. I think you'll enjoy it. So here's my conversation with Misty Phillip. Misty, welcome to Halfway There. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. I am glad to have you. We are sort of new friends, but we've talked a couple of times. You're in the Facebook group Christian Podcasters Association, which we should just mention to our friends, if you're a podcaster and a Christian, you should be in. Go find us on Facebook. Um, But that's, uh, that's how we met. Yeah, that's great. I had no idea when I started podcasting what I was doing and I needed friends. So yeah. I was really glad that I found the group. It's been very beneficial to me. That is great. I love seeing things like that. I don't know if you've had uh, people answer your questions in there. I think you've asked a few questions. Yeah. But uh, that's what I love about it is the chance to just come together because I didn't have that either at the beginning. You know, there was no, none of the Christian podcasting groups were very active. And so I wanted to create one that was, you know, we could yeah. kind of talk to each other. So, well, and I love the way the Lord makes connections with people that mm-hmm. you never would have known otherwise. Um, it's, it's, it's a fun, fun thing. Yeah, totally. I love that. And I think, um, I, I sometimes say this, I know that a lot of us get upset about the internet and all the, there's a lot of things where you can argue that, uh, it's not good, but there are a lot of good ways that it can be used as well. So, 
That's right. That's uh, God does use that. So that's awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about you. I gave this sort of broad, you know, description of some of the things you're doing, blogging and speaking and writing. You have some books coming out and uh, podcasting. So, but tell us, tell, take us into that and tell us a little more about it. Yeah. Well, let me start off by first and foremost. Um, I am a, a wife and a mom um, married to an amazing man named Peter Phillip. We have three boys who are all growing way too fast. So our uh, oldest is 25 and married. We have a 20 year old uh, with special needs and then a 17 year old. And when my oldest son uh, started college, I realized after being home with my boys for 20 years, homeschooling them, um, that I was going to have a really hard time if I didn't start doing something. And God had really laid it upon my heart to write and to speak. And I sort of told him no for a while. <laughs> um you know, I was, I just really was like, no, not me, Lord. I don't want to speak. I don't want to, but, um, you know, he just continued to be gentle and guide me and, uh, and encourage me to do so. And a couple years ago, about three years ago is when I started on this journey and I started a blog because I wanted to write a Bible study and it just sort of grew from there. One thing led to another and I started speaking and, and, um, yeah. And then now I've got a podcast, so it's cool. been a, a fun journey. Yeah. I like that. I think, um, that's sort of how it goes, right? One thing leads to another and you're like, Oh, maybe I should do that. And then it just kind of mushrooms on you. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, that's good. I'm sure there's a story in there about how God was calling you to that. So maybe we'll get to that in a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So take us back into your story. Let's go back, uh, into, so I don't know, I really don't know anything about you, so which is great. I love, this is what I like. So we can go in and let curiosity lead. So where did you grow up? What was that like for you? Yeah. Okay. So I was born in Minnesota and then moved to North Dakota and lived in a very small sort of farming community. And um, my parents had grown up in two different denominations and really had a hard time finding a church. And so I didn't um, grow up initially in the church and, um, you know, went to vacation Bible school at six years old and walked an aisle, like ran, um, you know, up to the altar and um, just knew, like had a call on my life from a very, very young age. Um, but it was really, um, interesting not having parents that were going to church. Mm -hmm. I, there was a, um, Bible college in my town. And as a little girl, I would ride my bike to the Bible college and talk to Bible college students. Um, which now <laughs> when I think about it, there's no way that I would ever allow my kids to do anything <laughs> like that in this day and age. Right. Um, but so I've had God's hand on my life. Um, but I think at the same time, you know, I've had a lot of enemy impact um, mm -hmm. that started from a very early age as well. So I, I wish that I could say that I had no testimony that I came to the Lord at six and that my life was perfect and amazing. Yeah. Um, but you know that, that that's not the way life goes. Right. No. And the reality is it's not the way it is for anybody. So right. we, we all have challenges. We all have struggles. Um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about some of that. So, uh, but you said you felt like you had a call in your life very early. So what, like how that showed up? What is, what does that mean? Yeah. Well, I just knew, I mean, I just fell in love. Um, it just at that very early age with God and just felt like he had something special for me to do in my life. And, um, it, it got a little bit muddled. Um, well, how'd you know that? I don't know. I don't know. I oh, just did. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm an intuitive person uh -huh. and that's the only thing that I can think of is that, um, I don't know. I really don't have an answer for that. Um, yeah. And that's okay. Uh, Cause I actually think that's really interesting. Right. Cause I, I, um, I have similar experiences where I'm like, Hey, I've got, I just know this is true and I can't prove it. And so in a scientific world, right. You're, you're in a, you're in trouble, right. Right. Uh, or not believed, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I can relate to that. That's why I'm asking. I'm like, okay, yeah. that, that's really interesting. So you kind of have this sense of purpose sense of like, okay, I need to be going to do something. 
Yes. And then I ended up going to church with a neighbor of mine, probably about the time I was about seven ish. Um, we lived next door to a, uh, Catholic family that had a bazillion kids. And <laughs> one of the kids was my age and, um, and my parents actually joined that church. And for the first time, um, I learned like the sense of a church community and, um, we attended that church for a while. And, um, a few years later, my, my brother died in a tragic accident mm. and it, um, it rocked my family's world. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my mom became really angry with God and, um, my parents had a lot of marital problems because my dad tried to keep the peace. Mm. And, um, and so I kind of became, we kind of became Easter and Christmas, um, churchgoers. So we went yeah. from having a church community. So I went from having this call on my life to having community to kind of not being in church. And then that's when I feel like the enemy really began to attack me early in my life because I began to um, doubt God's goodness. Mm. Um, and because I couldn't understand how he would take my brother away from me, I couldn't understand how he would allow my mom to go into such a deep, dark place and be angry. And, um, that sort of set the course and the trajectory for my junior high and high school years, which were anything, um, but godly. But at the same <laughs> time, I always had people that would invite me to church that, um, I don't know. I just, I knew there was a God, but I didn't, at that point, have a relationship with God. I was actually running as far as I could in the opposite direction. Yeah. And you had some pretty good reasons for that. I mean, that's, I, I don't want to sugarcoat that because I think that, uh, and you're not, I'm not saying you are, but the, uh, I think, or I don't want to blast past it. I think we often do that. We often go, okay, this is, you know, it's unreasonable for us to, to have those kind of responses. But the reality is, when things don't go the way we expect God to to intervene in them, right? That's a problem that that affects us. It does affect yeah. us, and we have to ask some questions, and we have to wrestle with that. And it's okay to do so. So you kind of went off on a on a more like, okay, I'm I'm out of here, God, forget it. Yeah, I went. Well, I went off the deep end. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but God, in His mm. rich mercy, He does not want anyone. Um, yeah he doesn't want to lose anyone. And so he comes after us and, um, you know, I had got to the end of myself, um, by the time I hit college and, um, fell head over heels in love with Jesus all over again, because I had nothing. I mean, God had literally stripped me of everything that I knew, um, to be, of comfort. And, um, and, and that's when he really began to, to change my life. Okay. Well, tell us that story. So he stripped everything away. What does that look like? Yeah. So, um, you know, I was in college. I was, I was finally out of my, my parents, um, home and, um, my husband's probably not going to like this story, but, um, <laughs> if he listens, uh, there was a young man that I was a promise to be uh, engaged to. And, um, we had a terrible breakup. And at that point, um, I thought that was my whole world. And I know that sounds really, um, maybe trite, but really I, that was my whole yeah. future and, and what I thought was going to be my future. Well, um, there, there's a way that marriage, uh, particularly, uh, well, for some of us, it can be like the very part of our identity, right? Very much right. part of our identity. Yeah. And so we, um, he was my high school, you know, my high school sweetheart and we broke up and it was devastating to me. And, um, I actually was contemplating suicide because I really thought my life was over. And I cried out to God and said, God, if you were really real, um, 
then I need you to show up. And he did. And he put a person into my life that really discipled me for the first time. And um, that's when I really got into the word and I got into a church and my heart began to heal. And and, um, I realized that there was more for my life. And, um, and then a few years later, that's when I met my husband and, uh, you know, my life totally changed. Yeah. And then, as I say, you know, things didn't get easy. Like when I met my husband and I mean, things did not get easy. Um, the Christian walk is not an easy walk, but it is those difficult, painful things that we experience in life that, um, show us our desperate need for God. And, um, he's there to comfort us and to guide us and, um, You know, so the challenging things that my husband and I have faced over the last 26 years have really helped to um, cement that relationship. And um, and we've been through a lot, but um, it's good. Yeah. How'd you meet your husband? Mm, I met my husband in a pool hall. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. So, um, yeah, I saw his brother across the room and I thought he was cute. So I went and introduced myself to him. And his brother had a girlfriend at the time that is now his wife. And so he <laughs> said, let me introduce you to my brother. And um, and then my husband faked his car breaking down so that he could um, could could get me to go on a date. It was a, a he had a, a big ruse, but um, <laughs> but he won my heart. And so and here we are Very 26 nice. years later. Oh, that's funny. That's great. OK, faking it in the pool hall. Gotcha. So, uh, okay. So, uh, so take us from there. So then you, you guys get married, but I want to know more about your, like, uh, kind of this change in your, in your heart to go, okay, I am like on board with Jesus now. Like, how did that, what was that experience? Like, was it just an emotional breakdown or like, what was that? What was that like? Yeah. So, um, well, let me back up and, and tell you like, a little bit more of the story about my husband and I. So we, we met in a pool hall and um, he knew instantly that I was the one he wanted to marry. And um, about a month into our relationship, we found out I was pregnant and um, I did not want to marry him because he uh, because I wanted to get married once and forever and not get divorced. And I saw a lot of people that I had grown up with that sure. got married early on because they w- were pregnant and I didn't want to do that. Um, so it was rough because, yeah. you know, we were together, but, um, we weren't married and, um, and then my father died oh. and, um, you know, every little girl dreams of her wedding and her daddy uh, giving her away and dancing with her dad. And, um, and that was stripped and taken from me. And, but what it did was it um, really solidified my relationship with my husband and um, Mm. we did get married. Um, After it took a well, I'll tell you this. Our son was our ring bearer in our wedding. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't start off in the traditional way. And um, and because of that, we had some really hard years because we weren't living for the Lord. But through that process, um, you know, we got into a church, my husband and I, before we got married, we got baptized together. So God was working. Mm. So he, um, you know, I told you I had been in a Catholic church. My husband had grown up Catholic, but as I became closer to the Lord, I knew that I needed more. Um, like I needed to know more. I'm a studier. I'm a researcher. I I wanted to know the Mm. word of God for myself. And I really began digging into the Bible. And then it, there were things about the Catholic church that didn't quite line up with where God was taking me. And so um, initially we had gone to a Catholic priest, uh, the church that my husband had grown up in. And at that time he said, you know, I can't marry y'all because you, you know, committed this sin and um, you could have just your, your immediate family there. Well, that like didn't make any kind of sense to me because 
um, I had dreamed of the whole, the whole wedding and all of, Mm -hmm. all of the things, um, that a little girl dreams of. And so, uh, that sort of pushed us away from the Catholic church because we knew that we had committed to sin and we were trying to make things right. Um, which was part of our, our journey as well. So we began looking at churches mm-hmm. and trying all of the different denominations, trying to figure out um, where we fit in. And um, we ended up in a small fundamental Baptist church. And mm. and so my husband and I, we were married. We had this son and then we wanted to have more kids and um started to plan a family. Um, I didn't get pregnant again right away. So we struggled with a little bit of, of infertility there and, um, finally got pregnant with our second son and he was born with severe, um, club feet and had a series of operations, um, From the time he was born, the first doctor that cast him, cast him too tight and tried to take his his feet from being upside down and backwards to a straight position. And we almost lost his feet. And the next um, year of our life was consumed being in and out of the hospital for our son um, because we would go to the hospital to have surgery for his foot and then while he was in the hospital, um, he would get the rotavirus and then he would have a, uh, a diarrhea virus for two months while he had casts all the way up to his diapers. Um, you know, then another hospital stay, he contracted RSV. Ugh. Literally, we spent the entire next um, year with him, you know, just in and out of the hospital. And it was, um, and to complicate matters, that's when we had started homeschooling, um, our, our oldest son. So here we are homeschooling, going through all of this stuff, um, with our son. And then, um, when he was about 11 months old, he had one of his shots and, um, that caused him to have grand mal seizures and he seized constantly for the next, uh, three days. So oh, he went from having seizures that were, you know, many hours apart to like every hour to every few minutes until he was almost in a constant seizure. So here he was a baby, um, with these grand mal seizures. And then they, um, medicated him with phenobarbital, which is a really strong barbiturate. And then for the course of the, of the next um, year and a half, while he was on that medication, he was, he would just be limp. So I say all that to say that, um, you know, we didn't just start our family and things were great. It was, um, we just were were hit by the fire instantly. And, um, but it was during those times that, um, you know, the word of God was the only thing that I could count on, um, which was the salve to my soul during Mm. that same time. My husband, we lived next door to my husband's parents and both of his parents ended up having brain tumors at the same time. And, Mm. um, then, we, I had a tubal pregnancy that nearly killed me. It's called a corneal pregnancy where the baby attached to the outside of my uterus right after, um, like a year after Connor was born. So we just literally went from thing to thing to thing. Then, um, we got pregnant again with our third son. So Ian, hold, hold on. And, yeah. I want to, cause I don't want to, I, I want to just go into that. So you're in the middle of all of this. That just seems like one crisis after another. Yes. How, so you said that scripture was kind of your, the thing you were holding on to, but how were you feeling about God at that time? Like what, how was that relationship like? Was it close yeah. or was it feeling like you were angry or how were, how were you going through that? Uh, no, actually, um, at the same time I started, uh, I got into ladies Bible study. So my husband and I joined a young married Bible study class. Mm. We, 
um, you know, got a really solid group of friends and the ladies in the group, we all sort of were having babies together and doing life together. We all started homeschooling at the same time. So we really sort of began this journey together. And one of the things that we did was we did ladies Bible study. And um, that's when Beth Moore started writing Bible studies. And uh, her love of the word of God really was contagious and made me want to get into the word of God. And, and, you know, my friends were like iron sharpening iron. So Mm. I actually, that's when I really, really fell in love with, I was not angry at God. I knew that if God allowed these things to happen, that even though I couldn't understand it, that he was good and that it was part of his plan for my life. And so I went from, you know, where I was younger and was angry and questioned God to coming to a place of, you know what, this is not the way that I would have chosen to go. Um, you know, Jenny Owens has a song, Jenny Owens is a, is a blind singer and, and she has this song that says that would not be the way that I would have chosen to go, but you lead me, um, through a world that's not my own. And I just, that's, mm. I know that this is not our home and this is not our world. And I know that, that, um, if God's allowed these things to happen, that it, he's got a purpose and a plan for it. So yeah. how much um, do you think? that your response to those crises were influenced by losing your brother at such a young age? You know, there was a radical transformation that occurred in my life. Um, once I really uh, was saved, you know, because losing my brother sent me down the, the absolute wrong path. Um, you know, alcohol, drugs, abortion. I mean, just, I was as far away from God as I could possibly be. Yeah. Um, but then once I, I, I had a saving faith and, and it became not just a head knowledge of, of that there is a God, but a heart knowledge that he is my God and, yeah. um, that he loved me enough to die while I was sinning, um, to save me. And, you know, that just really got a hold of me and I just wanted to know him more and be more like him. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I think that's a powerful example of how, um, suffering shapes us, right? It changes us. And so that you, you know, in some ways it prepared you for what was coming. Um, although, you know, I'm not saying that's the reason I'm just saying that that's what happened. Um, right. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So you're going through all, all of these, these crises and, um, and then what, what happens? And then at the same time, you know, I'm raising, I'm raising my boys and we're homeschooling and I've got this son who the, the one who had the grand mal seizures, you know, he has profound, um, profound disability um after that i mean so we spent the next um you know several years he didn't walk when he was supposed to he didn't talk when he was supposed Mm. to so you know from the beginning you know we were constantly in speech therapy and occupational therapy and and then um he was diagnosed with having pdd and os which is an autism spectrum disorder and so we put him in a, a special school for kids on the autism spectrum, but he didn't really represent like somebody who had autism. And, um, but we had him in this behavior modification therapy that seemed to help him somewhat. Um, but then there were other years that we would bring him home. And so, you know, we just really in the, the process of, you know, I was a wife and a mom and just doing the next right thing for the kids, um, at the time as they were growing and through high school and all of that. And then I turned, um, a few weeks before I turned 40, we found out that I was pregnant again and we had a baby who was diagnosed with trisomy 18 And the doctors said he was incompatible with life and suggested Mm. that we abort him. 
And we said he's fearfully and wonderfully made and God has a purpose and a plan for his life, no matter how long he lives. Um, and we carried him until he um, was still born. I like to say he was born in heaven, although his body was birthed here on earth. His soul was born in heaven. Mm. And so, um, you know, that was another sort of major thing that yeah. really shaped our life. But, you know, I was in a much different place then because um, I was reading a book by Ann Voskamp called A Thousand Gifts at the time. Yeah. And that, which um, is all about practicing gratitude and having a thankful heart and looking for ways um, in the everyday to be thankful for everything. So I was reading that book at the same time I found out I was pregnant. We were shocked, you know, because my youngest at the time was, was like eight. So we had gone many years. We thought God was done um, with, with, we thought we were done having children. And, um, and so I just began thanking him for every little thing. I thanked him every day I was pregnant. I thanked him and that heart posture of gratitude um, so affected the way we went through that tragedy because people would come to me and they would say they would want to minister to me and they I would end up ministering to them and they would mm. just leave sort of dumbfounded like what just happened because the grace of God was all over me during that time and and I truly believe it was because you know, I was submitted to him and submitted to his will, but I was also, I was truly able to count it all joy, um, even though it was one of the worst things I'd ever been through in my entire life. Wow. I mean, that's, that's a powerful statement. I was truly able to count it all joy, even though it was one of the worst things I've ever been through. Yeah. That's powerful. Uh, okay. Okay. So it's also unexpected, right? Which I think is what God does. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those ways that uh, the sort of the counterintuitive ways of God. Yeah. Um, that's going to have to be a book now, I think, the counterintuitive well, ways of God. You know, it is actually going to be my next book, but there's cool. a really cool story that happened um, that, I, that I need to share with you. So, right. you know, I told you that my mom um, had, would, had been hostile to – the Lord when I was growing up. And so, you know, she lost her son, then I lost my son. And like I said, I had the, the grace of God was on me. And my mom saw me walk through losing my son and praising God. And it had an incredible um, impact on her. And one of the things we had a funeral for him. Um, and one of the things that we asked our pastor to do was to share the gospel. And he shared the gospel in such a clear way. He talked about, there's a, a road um, that runs through Houston. We live in Houston. That's I-10 and it goes, you know, from the East coast to the West coast. And he said, and, and Dallas is North of us. And he said, no matter how much you want to go to Dallas, if you're on I-10, you're never going to get there. And, um, and I think through the love um, that I was able to love my mom through the through the process, through the gospel being shared, watching me walk through it, all of those sort of things, eventually my mom um, did turn her life over to the Lord. And I think that um, God used me losing my son to help bring my mother to the Lord after her being mm. angry for losing her son. Yeah. So you're able to see, uh, I mean, sometimes you call those silver linings, right? You can see where God is bringing the good out of the situation that was a horrible experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Well, and at the same time um, that uh, we were going through this with, with the pregnancy, um, my I had signed my oldest son up for a right to life speech speech contest. He was, um, he did a lot of speech and debate and moot court and mock trial. And so it was just kind of, 
an opportunity for him and he was going to write it on euthanasia. And, you know, it's one thing to say that you're pro-life, but when the rubber meets the road, it was a totally different thing. And so we were going through that and we lost our baby um, the week before he was supposed to write a speech. And so then he was able to tell our story of um, standing up for life for our son and um, and then that's really what got me to start speaking because um, my son won at the local level, went on to the state level. And while we were there, one of the ladies asked me if I would begin sharing my story. And it was raw. And it was, um, you know, a month after we lost him. But I began um, mm. sharing our story in hopes that um, it would help someone who had got that same diagnosis um, know that they can choose life. And, and um, even if the Lord ends up taking the baby's life, that um, they don't have to end their baby's life. Yeah, that's interesting. There's a comfort in letting God be the one who makes that decision and you don't have to be responsible for it, I guess. Absolutely. Hmm. So, I mean, I could see God working in multiple ways. Um, yeah. And, and, and working through my children as well, um, because, you know, they were excited. They were hope filled. And um, and so I saw God use it in their lives in some interesting ways as well. Yeah. So were you aware that maybe in some ways God was using this experience to call you into that destiny? You were always, uh, always, uh, expecting? No, I, you know, I, I didn't, I, that's funny because you would think that I would, but I didn't because then after that, I spoke a couple of times and I taught at some different right to life things. And, and, you know, like I said, I had my oldest son in speech and debate, uh, all through school because I was deathly afraid of public speaking and didn't mm. want my kids to have that fear. And so the more God was, <laughs> was calling me to do these things, the more I would go, no, 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 you know, I'm too busy. I'm still homeschooling. I've got all this stuff going on. Um, but really that was part of the catalyst that, that started the journey. Um, cause then I started, I started journaling and just, um, writing and my prayers out. And, um, and, and as the more I wrote, the more I saw that, you know, that God did want me to tell my story because part of what we go through is so that we can help other, um, people go through difficulties. Right. I mean, that's what the word tells us. And so, um, I've been through a lot. And so I knew that, that the Lord wanted me to um, encourage other women um, that, you know, were experiencing difficulty and pain and loss and suffering, which, you know, that's what I, I try to do today. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, how'd that turn into a blog? Like did you, when did you decide to start doing that? Yeah. So like I said, I mean, I, I had had this tussle with God for a little while, like, no, 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 I'm too busy. I can't do that. <laughs> um, and then I had a friend who was a little further ahead on a similar journey and she had been to this conference called She Speaks, which is in North Carolina, put on by Proverbs 31 Ministries and Lisa Turkers to teach and train authors, um, speakers and Christian leaders. And um I just felt like it was something that I was supposed to do. And so, and it's, it's a little pricey and, you know, I wasn't working cause I was just, you know, at home and I asked my husband, like, would you make this huge investment in me to go mm. to this conference? And he was like, absolutely. And that sort of started the journey because uh, they were like, okay, you need to have a blog and you need to have business cards. And so I just started sort of going through the motions and I didn't even know what I didn't know. Yeah. Um, but my family was so encouraging to me along the way and it has really been a family affair. So, um, you know, my husband helped me set up my website and bless his heart. He read every single thing that i wrote before I put it on my blog. Um, 
And uh, now uh, that we're further into the journey, he, um, you know, he does all of the technical stuff for my podcast because there's no way I would ever be able to do it. My, my kids have been involved in it as well. So that's kind of how that journey got started. And then, like I said before, you know, one thing just led to another. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. That's kind of how it goes. But it sounds like God was kind of calling you into into sharing your story and being an influence for a long time. And then finally, uh, you were like, okay, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So I, I, when I wanted to write, um, you know, I had this idea about, um, and then I went to my husband and I said, you know, I think I should write about this or should I write about that? And he said, you know, you really need to write about overcoming because, um, your life is an example of an overcomer because you have been through so much and you have not lost your faith through it all. Um, you've just grown closer to the Lord and loved him more. And he said, that's what I think you should write about. And so with, um, with sort of that marching orders, I just dug in and I went straight to the scripture and I'm a little bit of a, a, a Bible nerd now. And so, <laughs> um, I've never been to seminary or formally studied Greek, but I always get into the Greek words. And so I looked at that word overcome and overcomer in the Bible and sort of just went on that whole journey. And the next day we went to church and our pastor was teaching a sermon on Joshua about being strong and courageous and about being an overcomer. And, Mm. and this is really, really a, a neat story. So when I was in college, when I had, had, um, you know, when I initially became a Christian, there was a, singer named Susan Ashton, um, who was popular. And I would just listen to her music on loop. I have a really strong connection with music. And, and when I began listening to Christian music, her music just really spoke to my heart. She happened to be the person who was singing at church that day. And so it was really interesting how God had brought all these things together as, as he's began calling me to write this study. Then I go to church. I felt like it was confirmed that the, one of the songs that she has is um, about the Holy spirit. Like I want I want to go where you want me to go, but I can't because you, you, you move, but, but you move me. And so I really felt like God was saying, you know, I'm moving you into this. Um, mm, yeah. So that's kind of how that all started. And, and um, you know, I just keep learning and growing and never wanted to write a book. Uh, never thought I would write a book. Um, and now I've written um, th- that Bible study after two and a half years, like God pretty much downloaded the Bible study to me, but um, took me the next couple of years to walk it out and, and to write it out. Um, and so that is now in its final edits and coming out this spring. And then at the same time, I got plugged in with a ministry for wives called A Wife Like Me. And um, we began hearing all of these struggles uh, for women wanting to get deeper in their their connection with their husband. So uh, it's a collaborative effort that we just wrote a devotional and, and that comes out May 1st. So um, I went from not thinking I was ever going to write a book to I've got two books coming out Um you know, at the same time. So God gave me uh, a double portion there. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So people will be able to get those where? Amazon? Yes. Yes. So um, A Wife Like Me is available for, um, it's called, the book is actually called Dear Wife. And it is 10 minute um, invitations to draw closer to your husband by studying the life of Jesus. And that is available for pre-order now. It's, um, you can go to Dear Wife Book dot com or you can go to Amazon and um, I don't have the official date yet for my Bible study which is called the struggle is real but so is God um, because I just 
am finishing the second round of edits and, um, but I'm hoping to have that available on Amazon, um, by late May. Cool. Very good. Yeah. Well, I think those are fantastic. The podcast too, because obviously our, our friends here listening are podcast listeners. So it's called, uh, by his grace. Yes. And, and on by his grace, I interview women that have different kinds of struggles and how God has seen them through. Um, because I think that it's important for us to know that we're not alone in this journey of life, that sometimes when we have um, bad things happen to us or we go into a period of long suffering, we may, we may feel like nobody understands. Um, but first of all, Jesus understands because he suffered mm-hmm. um, and, and died. And, and when we suffer, we... Um, yeah. join in and can understand his suffering. Um, but also just to know that if God did this for that person, God can do that for me. And so um, we talk about all kinds of struggles, big and small, in hopes that it will encourage somebody to know they're not alone. Yeah, I love that. It's so important. Uh, if you're not in community, find a community and you can, you're can. you helping provide that. Hey, you're not, not alone, whether both on the podcast and your writing. And uh, I love it, Misty. Thanks a lot for being here. Um, Excellent. Thank fr- you so much. Hey, friends, you can find the links to everything we talked about uh, with Misty. So I've got all of the uh, links to her website, her books, um, other books that we mentioned. So just go to halfwaytherepodcast.com. You can get all of that right there. And uh, Misty, anything you want to leave us with as we wrap up here? Um, Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me on the show. I love what you're doing, Eric. And um, yeah, I just would say no one is beyond God's saving. And, you know, I know that he's done incredible, miraculous things in my life. And um, I would just say stay the course and um, keep your shield of faith up because we live in in difficult times times. Um, but if we are faithful to the end, God has uh, a reward for um, his bride, which is eternal life in heaven. And the things of earth will all pale in comparison to what awaits for us in eternity. Amen. I can't wait either. So we'll, we'll get there. Thanks a lot, Missy. I appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hey friends, thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed Misty's story. I hope it touched you. And again, uh, give you the offer. Hey, go out to halfwaytherepodcast.com. Not only can you find show notes where there's links to um, all the things that we talked about here. There was a lot this time. Uh, but you can also find um, you can find my day experience. It's a Bible study for you that is uh, simple. It'll take you just a few minutes every day for eight days, whether you do them all in one week or take them a little bit slower, do it over two weeks or two months. It will help you in your walk. You can find that at halfwaythereapodcast.com. Just click on eight-day experience. All right, friends, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, keep the faith. Keep the faith.